Today we talk about declarative languages, which are used primarily for data processing and retrieval. So let's talk about what a database is. Well, a table is a collection of records, which are just tuples of values organized into columns. So every record has the same number of elements, and typically the element in each position has the same type. Databases store tables and have methods for adding, editing, and retrieving those records. And the way in which records are added or retrieved is typically with a declarative programming language. So the Structured Query Language, or SQL, is perhaps the most widely used programming language of all. Its syntax looks like this. It says things like, Select star from toy info, where the color is yellow. And what will happen is that after issuing this query, the database will look among all of its toys and figure out which ones um, have a color of yellow. And it will return a subset of all the records it knows about, where we've filtered some of them by some criteria. So in this case, we have all the yellow toys and each row in this table is a record that has description of one particular item. So a wiffle ball is yellow and it has this cost and this weight and some ID to keep it separate from all of the other toys in the system. So these databases are used in all sorts of applications because that's how we store large amounts of structured data. So SQL is an example of a declarative programming language because you say what you want. You want everything where the color is yellow. It separates computing what you want from how you actually go about computing that information. It's up to the language interpreter to compute the result of the issued query in any way that it wants. As a programmer or as a user, your job is just to describe exactly what you want, and the system is meant to give you the answer. So declarative programming just feels quite different from what we do normally when we're running imperative programs, as we have been in Scheme and Python. So the characteristics of declarative programming primarily are that a program is a description of the desired solution. So it's not a description of the process of how to get there. You just say what you want. The interpreter figures out how to generate that solution. In an imperative language, Python and Scheme are both these, a program is actually a description of computational processes. So you have to specify in Python exactly what you want the interpreter to do, and the interpreter just carries out execution and evaluation rules. Another way to think about the contrast is that imperative languages are typically structured around procedures or functions which have one return value. Whereas in a declarative language, you issue a query, which is a generalization of a function that actually makes choices along the way and may return many different values. Okay, so this sounds cool, but it turns out that building a universal problem solver is hard. So declarative languages can't really just solve all problems for you so declarative languages often handle only some subset of problems. There's only so many things that you can do inside the language. So there's sort of a spectrum, a trade-off of options in how you can define a declarative programming language. We could solve really cool, complicated problems, but sometimes these declarative languages don't scale to large amounts of data. Or we could limit the amount of problem solving that our declarative language is able to handle, but scale it up to large data sets. So this is a trade-off that exists generally. There's a lot of research in figuring out how to create a declarative language that solves cool problems and handles large-scale data sets, but that's still a challenge for the community. So in this course, we're going to stick with the solve cool problems as long as they are small realm of declarative languages. Most applications in the real world are focused on very large scale data sets and make some compromises about what you're allowed to state in your declarative language. But 
both of these have the same basic idea behind them, which is that you say what you want and the interpreter figures out how to get it for you.